positive response to this question. Christian Pulisic and Yao Ming are perfect examples of how national heroes can almost instantly boost a sports appeal in their home nation. And I mean, yeah, look at when China's Christian basketball Pulisic right now. Joined what is going on, guys? It is JJ here, back with a new video. And today we're going to take a look for the first time at why Americans don't watch F1. Now, this is going to be a fun video for me because I am an American that does watch F1. Um, and it was very unique, my sort of turn to the sport in the first place. Uh, it was just something I mean I randomly came upon I mean I was just watching videos on I forgot what even what racing it was it was something Tesla related and F1 was just there and so I was like oh this looks really cool I'll take a look at it. I think it was like a four F1 car versus a Tesla um, and then it just kind of sprouted into what it is I mean you guys can find the literal first video uh, that we did on F1 on the channel here I think back from November and obviously jumping sort of right into it uh, from then on and we've learned bit by bit things about f1 and it's been an amazing journey uh which is why we're gonna take a look at why other americans uh, unfortunately don't watch f1 and maybe what we can do to get more into the sport if f1 wants us to let's get into the video as well guys you can find the original video down in the description below definitely go give it a look might be can you watch. guess how many episodes of the simpsons have aired since the last time an american won a formula one race all of them Every single episode. In that time, the Berlin Wall has fallen down, J.K. Rowling wrote all seven Harry Potter books, and the UK and Germany won a combined 22 F1 Drivers World Championships. Mm. F1 itself grew to become one of the most Hurts. popular sports. I mean, can I just say, there's kind of a gatekeep to the sport, you know? F1's, I mean, Americans don't it's get a lot of access to F1, it's a, it's a major, major sport lovers that European everyone has South consistently American struggled sport. to win over, the US. Obviously, the Formula One group wants to change that and has made it their aim to conquer the US. But how does a sport with minimal links to America compete with the likes of IndyCar, NASCAR, and baseball? Welcome baseball. to athletic interest. In this baseball? Baseball? Get out of here. This video it, it's we not how Formula baseball, One is planning sure. to take over America and whether the key to success lies in rediscovering an American F1 driver. Rediscovering one? Interesting. Liberty Media, the American media company which purchased F1 in 2017, has been on a relentless push to make the sport popular in the US. In the words of their CEO, our strategy in the future will be to be more present in the US. It's a work in progress, but I can guarantee to you there is now big interest in the USA with Formula One. F1 mm. is certainly a lot more popular Maybe than it used to be, interest. but there were times when most Americans thought Formula One was a special brand of baby food. Liberty Media's strategy for winning over the American audience can be condensed into one simple phrase. The more you know, the more you enjoy. Formula One understands... They are, they are motherfucking right. They are so right. Because I, the more we've gotten to the sport, the more it has become that enjoyable as for me. viewers but consume totally the races, they are constantly developing the knowledge of the sport. The deeper we invest ourselves intellectually and emotionally, the greater levels of enjoyment we receive from watching the races. If you have Which no knowledge fair. of Formula One, you might switch off after a few minutes of watching someone drive around in an oversized can of Red Bull. Shut up. If you are already aware of how tire strategies, weather conditions, and inter-driver rivalries can dramatically alter the outcome of the race, you might stick around and see what happens. Formula One has developed a number of tools to help educate Americans about the sport and trigger their desire to consume the races. Mm, Liberty Media transformed like like Formula what? One into the fastest growing sport on social media. Through post-race really? analysis, interviews, highlights and technical breakdowns, F1 is providing millions of potential fans with access to a crash course in everything they could possibly You know what, that is fair. The F1 if channel is pretty sick. loves watching documentaries and continuously talking about them with vaguely interested friends, Formula One has you covered. The Drive to Survive series, produced by Netflix, is a massive hit across Which also... You guys gotta let me know. The plan is to start streaming Drive to Survive on the channel. I, I, I literally am just like a vessel for this sport, aren't I? I'm, I am what is enveloped in this what Liberty Media no, strategy. And it's proven to be there. incredibly effective at it's creating fair. new fans it's for fair. the sport. It's, it's a fun time. The series time. makes the sport very accessible and gives everyone entertaining insights into how F1 actually works. 
For example, the complex and often ruthless driver transfer market, known as the silly season, is explained using intimate interviews with oh Ernst God, driver Rutenberg and shadowing his daily life as he tries to secure a seat for the following season. You, you can be lucky I had my first coffee, otherwise you'd be right out the window. <laughs> Another way of winning over new fans is to bring the action directly to their doorstep. Liberty Media are keen to boost American exposure to Formula One by hosting a greater number of races in the US. Since 2012, done, the only US Grand Prix has done. been held at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas. The 2012 US Grand Prix was the first in four years. This hiatus was triggered by a decline in interest, coupled with the fact that the crowd at the 2005 Grand Prix at Indianapolis spent most of the race booing. Why? A second Why? US Grand Prix at the Miami Hard Rock Circuit has finally been added to the 2022 calendar. This was not a simple achievement. Oh my god, Numerous that's the other race to find that I need the second to see. race in the US failed, and the Miami project was met with a furious backlash from locals. At the end of the day, it is still a success and a good sign for the future of F1 in America. Races on site are one thing, but the really big audiences are only reached via broadcasts. When Liberty Media took over F1, they decided to throw away a $40 million five-year contract with NBC. Why? Because they were launching their own subscription-based streaming service. In essence, F1 wanted to be in competition with the TV stations that were paying the millions. Unsurprisingly, but they've NBC sold their rights rejected to ESPN. This deal. In response, Liberty Media mm. gave the rights to ESPN for free and launched F1. Oh, you see what I mean? You see what I mean? Oh, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. There's a reason I get to watch all the F1 stuff so easily. Everyone understands that viewers are more likely to consume free content and use ESPN to give fans an entry point into the sport. Once hooked, they are geniuses. And they are actually geniuses. Using the tools mentioned before. Fans are given the opportunity to purchase a subscription to F1 TV to gain access to exclusive information not shown through the live broadcast, including unique camera angles, exclusive data, and non-stop team driver radio communications. Adding a greater number of tracks and boosting engagement through education are effective strategies. But one of the True. underlying reasons why F1 has struggled in America is the lack of a U.S. driver. Would an American? I feel like the jersey on my wall can be like proof that if you do get like a, a person of interest, someone that everyone can rally behind in the U.S., you might have a shot. And I, it kind of does start with Christian Pulisic. I mean, Christian Pulisic in, in terms of world football, drew so he draws still so many eyes to the sport, especially in the Premier League. Where and I mean. The rest of the U.S. sort of players, or the rest of the team, sort of followed him. I mean, look at you could say Gio Reyna, um, you could say Weston McKenney, you could say pretty much all of those goalkeepers, etc. All of them can come from that sort of same branch that Christian Pulisic came from, and I think that's super, super sick. I love that. American F1 so driver, American driver the popularity nah, of the Dominic sport Toronto. in the U.S. Nah, Dominic, Toronto. Take There's that plenty back. of Take evidence that back. to suggest a positive response to this question. Christian Pulisic and Yao Ming are perfect examples of how national heroes can almost instantly boost a sports appeal in their home nation. And I mean, yeah, look at when China's Christian basketball Pulisic right now. joined Chelsea in 2019, the Premier League saw an instant boost in their U.S. fan base. Pooley Six debut for Chelsea against Manchester United set an NBC record for the most US viewers of a football match. Even more astonishingly, over the 2019-2020 season, Pooley Six sold more replica shirts in the US than Cristiano Ronaldo. Probably even more impressive is the impact that Yao Ming had on the NBA's popularity in China. After I mean, joining huge, the Houston Rockets in 2002, becoming an eight-time NBA All-Star, there are now over 600 million Chinese basketball fans, and China is considered to be the NBA's largest international market. But does it also work in Formula One? Take the case of Robert Kubica. His return to the sport in 2019 saw viewing figures in Poland increase by 256%. Or the case of Max Verstappen. The sport has seen a 30% uplift in Dutch fans across all demographics. An incredible 2 million Dutch people tuned in to watch Verstappen's victory in Mexico. That's 11% of the entire population. 
an American driver would be the per- 11 per- one out of every 10 Dutch people watched that race. Jesus. Perfect hook for Jesus. potential fans who don't know enough about F1 to fall in love with the sport. But even without an American driver, does the strategy of boosting US support by educating potential fans work? Since 2017, Liberty Media has overseen a gradual increase in the popularity of F1, and TV figures are also speeding ahead. In the 2021 season, viewing figures are reported to have topped 1 million. But the much celebrated 1 million viewers has room for improvement when compared to the Premier League. NBC has suggested that close to 10 million Americans watch Premier League football and big I'm matches with the likes of Manchester United and Chelsea can claim over 1 million viewers. However, only 10,000 people signed up for F1 TV in the first year. But Liberty is playing the long game. Morgan Stanley predicts that close to 250,000 Americans will sign up to F1 TV by 2027. And there are opportunities for that much is... larger growth, with close rivals IndyCar boasting over 69 million fans across the country. But this also shows that F1 is attempting... I, I would like to call cap on that IndyCar stat. I would like to call cap on that because I've barely seen a single thing from IndyCar. Maybe that's just me being blind to it. To maybe that, maybe that is right. competitive market and win over viewers who have grown up with a motorsport culture that doesn't automatically feel at home in Monaco or Azerbaijan. Liberty Media's current strategy has proven to be relatively successful, but the sport has a long way to go before it challenges the likes of IndyCar or the Premier League. Formula One's future in the US would be given a massive boost with the introduction of an American driver. But that's easier said than done with a country desperate for greater investment into its karting infrastructure if it ever hopes mm. to produce a world champion again. You want the American F1 fair. experience, but you are not living in the US? Then you should check out our video sponsor NordVPN. NordVPN uh, lets you here we go. Yep, that's where the sponsor ad comes in right at the end, and that is where we stop. So obviously, I think they do hit a lot of good points. I hate that I'm fitting into the stereotype of an American starting to watch F1, but I love that at the same time because it's been really, really fun to enjoy a new sport. Plain and simple. There's a lot of gatekeepers to it. F1 has a lot of gatekeepers. There are always those comments with people saying, stop watching F1 if you're not gonna blah, 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 insert. Okay, you're not gonna stop me, but I mean, to each their own. You are allowed to gatekeep your sport all you want, uh, the same way people gatekeep world football. Like, the people hate on Americans watching the Premier League or, or joining the fan bases of Team X, Y, and Z because of X, Y, because you don't live there. It doesn't make any sense, does it? It's, it's a global sport. You're allowed to be a fan from anywhere. You don't have to live down the street to be a fan of something hate that part. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about Americans not watching F1. What do you propose in terms of growing the American market in F1? Or do you like that America is joining F1? Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching though. And peace.